My name is Andy from the YouTube channel, How to Make Everything. In my last video that I did for Curiosity Stream, I explored trying to make my own lumber in this era of really expensive wood using just a variety of ways such as plastic, cardboard, and sawdust. And in the end, I was able to achieve a pretty decent piece of lumber. It took a lot of work just to grind everything up. And then even then it had some structural integrity issues because it really wasn't well mixed together once it was all melted down. To really mass produce something and produce a large enough supply of lumber to actually build something, I'm gonna need some industrial tools. I was ultimately pretty limited by just these small tools that I had. So in this video, I'm going to take things to the next extreme and actually construct some industrial equipment that'll help me in each of the steps of this. To help with these projects, I'm enlisting the help of the open source project Precious Plastic by One Army that has the plans and directions for constructing some of these things. So I'm going to be adapting them for my own personal use here. Uh, be sure to check out their website if you are curious in doing this yourself. First up, we're going to need to make a shredder. So previously I've used a wood chipper, a paper shredder, and a blender with various mixed results. Overall, very inconsistent and uh, a lot of it wasn't able to really handle difficult things like plastic. Plastic has a tendency to be plastic. So it has a certain level of plasticity, which is a bending. It makes it hard for a lot of things to actually cut it up. So what we're gonna need is a shredder. And it's basically a big high torque spinning gear of teeth that are going to chop it and just snap it over and over again as it goes through it. These things come in a variety of sizes. Some of them are big enough to throw an entire car into. We're gonna make something a little bit smaller just to grind some of our plastic. So we need to laser cut all the different pieces courtesy of the Precious Plastic Project. Then we're gonna have to hook it up to a high torque motor that will allow it to run and pulverize all the materials we hope to shred. I'm here with Martin, who's a machinist, to kind of help me get all this to work. So we ordered some laser cut pieces, pretty much all ready to go. There's a few burrs and things that will get in the way, so we gotta file them out, and then we can start putting it together and see what we got. Now that we have the burrs file off of everything, and it all clicks together, now we need to assemble it. And if you do it right, they stagger, and you get a really cool cut. So that way all the teeth cut in sequence instead of having one giant shredding action. The beauty of laser cut part is how you can do the tab and slot design. So these have these little notches cut out, and then other parts have little fingers, and everything clicks together. So it's assembled, we cleaned it, ready to weld. Oh, I guess we start screwing stuff together. I think we should bolt it down. <laughs> so, uh, is this a successful failure? Yeah, just need some bolts. I think. <laughs> yeah, we have something that so works. we're almost the man. It made a hole. It, it'll work, but yeah, we're like 95% of the way there. Now it's just a matter of uh, making a frame for it and a chute and something that will keep your hands away from it. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, it works. Now it's just a matter of making it safe. <laughs> so now we have the shredder and it looks pretty promising. The next step of something we're gonna need is an extruder. The extruder basically takes all the material we shredded into a really fine powder and then you load it up into a high torque screw here. And as you can tell, things get smaller and smaller as it goes on and that applies more and more pressure to compact everything. And uh, in addition to this, a few different heaters. 
So we have a few bands of heaters that'll attach here, and that'll heat up the plastic, get it all nice and melty. And then we can squeeze it all together, and it'll come out this end. So the first step for that will be uh, wiring up all the heaters, and that's all configured and ready to go. Just a quick reminder, if you want smart, fun content like this video in the future, go ahead and subscribe to Curiosity Stream's YouTube channel since they're the ones helping me do all of these challenges. So, switch the breaker, see what happens. Okay, okay, turned on, just trying to heat it. And then if I take this one, that one's hot. Okay, okay. That's good. It's a good sign. Let's see if we have any heat coming from these then. That's hot. It's a lot of smoke. Let's turn these on. 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 With the extruder wired up and set to go, let's get back to the shredder and make those last tweaks to get it going. Okay, so the part that's failing is that there is no P on the shaft there. So the two little set screws are just moving. There's no way those little two screws are pinching down on the shaft hard enough to transmit all this force into the blades. Because yeah, you see how this is spinning, but yeah. this is not. Oh. So it's moving a lot of force and torque, but these little screws aren't enough to transmit all that force. So we need to put one of these on this shaft and then it'll work. Or if you don't want to wait for the part to arrive, weld them together. All right, so I had to make a few adjustments along the way, but I think we have a working shredder at this point. Some issues we ran into with a little too much torque on the uh, the coupler, and it would kept slipping. So we had that welded on there. That is uh, pretty solid now. Seems to be working pretty good. And then we did a little rearrangement of the teeth before they were more of a V shape. It was kind of a narrow area where the plastic would just get pushed and bounced out, especially when doing the wider stuff. So now we just kind of have it in a successive row, so it's a little bit wider area for things to kind of fall into and hopefully that'll be better for grinding up larger stuff.
Oh God. That explains what breaks first. That is a lot of torque when you can break such a fat piece of iron just from twisting it. Yeah, this was not the part that I was expecting to break on this machine. Uh, the good ones. Yeah, I guess we overloaded the teeth when I poured all the uh, fine ones in there. A few days later, when a new, better replacement piece arrived, we were back in operation to keep shredding our plastic. Now, to start extruding. After a lot of wiring, rewiring, then rewiring once again. I believe I have everything correctly set up for the extruding machine. So with it, we have four different heaters. They're connected to three different PID controllers. That's going to make uh, three different regions. So we have the uh, the feeding zone, the barrel, and the nozzle, and that allows you to kind of do a little bit of a gradient of temperature. So as stuff gets fed in, it gets hotter and hotter until it goes out the nozzle. And then here is where we're going to put the mold of whatever we want to. Uh, to make and that will be uh, injection molding and that's how we're gonna get our final product to start out with we got a cement mixer drill you can see if this has enough torque to do it so hopefully everything's set got it set to all the different temperatures we want for the different ones and just gotta flip it on and hopefully things work and hopefully nothing starts on fire hopefully things work out The shaft just snapped. Uh, we broke our entire setup because it turns out that this screw and the extruder puts a ridiculous amount of force and pressure in this direction. And that caused the front of the drill to literally just unscrew itself and fall off. So to fix that, we came up with another little method. We're gonna use a uh, thrust bearing. So as the shaft is pushing down, We've got this little spacer that'll push against the bearing and against the aluminum. So all the pushing forces are gonna be absorbed by this metal plate. And that'll put all of the rotating force into the screw of the extruder and push all the plastic out the front. And one of the other things that we added to this was Andy built this wonderful little metal and wood hopper 
because everything just kept on falling out. And that will hopefully get us to fill our mold again and make a whole bunch more of fun plastic pieces. All right, so we made a few changes that should hopefully address all the issues we ran into with our first attempt. We had the thrust bearing and something for it to push against. We're going to repurpose the motor we used for the shredder. We have it so we can swap it out on this, uh, the rig here. And that should give us ample power to extrude things without much difficulty. Let's get everything powered up. Temperatures are going up. And once they're to temperature, the plastic should be melted and we can start extruding and hopefully nothing breaks this time. Now you can see the whole thing is spinning and pushing. So like all the forces should be on this piece of metal instead of the motor and such. And the fact that we still have a little gap between the two couplers means that it should be working as we expected. After extruding a large supply of smaller bars, I now have enough to work with. Theoretically, our setup could have been able to produce some larger sizes, but so far it seems every extra variable thrown at the setup causes a new failure, requiring a new repair and redesign that ends up further delaying everything. So acting conservatively, I stuck to the safer smaller sizes and just mass produced them. Optimistically, my goal was to produce something more along the lines of 2x4s and build something a little bit larger. But with the persistent challenges and breakages this project has posed, it seems anything to that industrial of a scale was going to require maybe even a year's worth of trial and error to overcome all the inevitable challenges that arise as things get scaled up. But in the end, I was able to produce enough material to build a small structure, a birdhouse. Being made entirely of recyclable material, this product is technically entirely free. But ultimately that doesn't really account for the upfront costs of building the equipment and the hours it took to troubleshoot and develop kind of a working workflow. All of the trial and error and tweaking and adjusting to get things to work took at least 40 hours, totaling around $337 at today's minimum wage. And then for the materials of the actual equipment, that costs over $1,600. Meaning that this birdhouse actually cost over two grand to really produce. So to actually develop a process of producing a alternative using recycled material cost roughly 17 times the actual price of this at its worst. But now that we've undergone all the expenses and troubleshooting, we potentially can mass produce similar objects, eventually driving down our expenses, potentially to the point that this could be a viable business of repurposing recycled material into new goods. I feel like this project has really shown that trying to scale up a process to an industrial scale is a little bit harder than you expect. Trying to do it once is one thing, but trying to do it over and over again without your equipment failing, is a bit challenging. So while this project seems a little bit silly at first from its upfront cost, in the long run, it actually has some real potential at being sustainable. Thanks for watching. My name is Andy from How To Make Everything. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel right now and look for Curiosity Stream on social media. Links in the description. Also, if you have any ideas on how to make this experiment work better, feel free to leave them in the comments below.